Let's speak to Peter Matthews, a professor of political science at Cypress College in California, who joins us from Los Angeles. Uh, Peter, thank you for your time. Let's just be clear about this for the sake of the viewer before we get your take on it. So this story in the New York Times predates the Mueller investigation into possible collusion, of course, between the Trump campaign and Russia. That's a criminal matter. This is a counterintelligence aspect of whether the president may have been working on behalf of Moscow. It's astonishing, isn't it? It's quite remarkable and quite uh, unnerving for a lot of people to hear that it's probably the first president that's been investigated directly by the FBI, allegedly so far, uh, by the FBI, to in a counterintelligence move to see if uh, in any way that he might have been serving the interests of Russia. So we'll have to wait and see where it, it leads. And of course, Mr. Mueller took over the investigation, and this is going to be continuing with him. And we'll know fairly soon, I would think, uh, when he makes up his final report as to where this leads us. But it's very serious. Uh, consideration at this point. It now, certainly can't help Mr. Trump's image. Right absolutely. Now. Look, the fact that we don't know if Robert Mueller's investigation is looking at that particular counterintelligence angle. But is there anything you've seen during the Trump presidency that suggests possibly Moscow has some sort of influence over the president? That apparent compromise, the compromising material Moscow, some people say, has on Trump could be influencing his policies in anything you've seen. There's some circumstantial evidence, but there's nothing hard evidence that we know from the outside, but Mr. Mueller might have something on the inside. For example, Mr. Trump did a lot of business with Russia before he became president, and he sold and bought condominiums to very wealthy Russian oligarchs, made lots of money from that. His own son said that his, uh, the Trump Organization has a lot of uh, businesses, that has a lot of revenue from Russia. And there was a period when President Trump could not get a lot of financing from other regular banks. And during that time, it looks like some Russian wealthy people helped him to do business. So he made private money. But the question is, what has he also been doing since he's been president? Has he been making any decisions that would, you know, in any way compromise his integrity by look, making it appear that he's benefiting from the office in a private way? He's got 500 businesses around the world, and he's making profits when foreign leaders come and stay in his hotels. This is a emoluments clause problem. And the Constitution says that no elected or appointed official of the United States government should ever make, have a profit or benefit. It's a monument from any foreign government or its agents. So this is a very important uh, conflict of interest question as well. There are many series of questions here, not just about Russia, but about how he's been operating his private business versus the public good that the president's supposed to be pursuing. Yeah, so we know that Michael Cohen, his former longtime lawyer, is going to go back to Congress and speak to the uh, Oversight Committee at the House of Representatives, where they're expected to ask about Donald Trump's businesses. What about the government shutdown then, yeah. Peter? Is this uh, propaganda from the White House, or is it a real issue that the majority of the country really cares about? Because tying it to the border wall issue with Mexico. It's become a really big issue now because many people are aware that um, almost a million government employees have been kept from going to work or deferred or not paid at all. Uh, during this time, and many lost their paychecks, didn't get their paychecks yesterday, or on Friday, I should say, that's uh, today. And that's hit very hard for them personally. Some of them had to sell their automobiles to make some money for the rent. One woman couldn't even pay for her wedding. It's just tragic. It's also very shameful for the U.S. to have to have this kind of image uh, exposed to the world, that we allow our government to go, to go out of business every so often because of disagreements in politics. But also, in this case, the president is using this as a leverage to get his wall, the funding for the border wall, which most of us in America feel is unjustified, unnecessary, and unworkable. And 56% of Americans don't want to have a border wall. 62% don't want the government to be shut down, and yet Mr. President continues to do this. There has to be some, uh, hopefully, calm minds will prevail, and President Trump especially will have to see things much more clearly and try to reach some kind of consensus as to how to settle this problem, because I think the country is mostly with the opposition on this. Not, on the, not with the president on this whole border wall shutdown and the shutdown of the government and also the border wall building. So if something has to be done here, and the president, I think, has to re recal recalibrate what's going on. It's very important to note, he should take note that the Constitution requires him to promote the general welfare, the general well-being of the people on an ongoing basis. And this is really hurting the economy, individuals as well as the economy. We're losing a billion dollars a day approximately at this time, the U.S. government is, and so is the economy, rather. Very wrong. Peter Matthews, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed.